through books, video blogs, written blogs, development coaching programs, workshops, and motivational speaking, she is consistently working towards encouraging consistent self-growth and accountability. Her mission is to remain committed to serving others through her personal testimony. She believes that if her pain can benefit even just one person, it was worth suffering through. She inspires others through consistently working towards self-development and finding the function and the freedom in the most authentic version of themselves. Thank you, Sora. Please welcome Tierra Nicole Riley. beautiful soul board. I'm so honored to be your keynote speaker for today's Annie Neville Talent and Networking Luncheon today, where today's theme is the diversity and strength of Sigma Champions. I'd like to start off by sharing a little bit about myself, because I don't take for granted that you know who I am. My name is Tierra Nicole. And I joined our lovely sorority November 16, 2010 at Virginia Tech, a part of the Kappa Psi chapter. Additionally, I am an author. I published my book last year, 23 and Finally Loving Me. I'm a motivational speaker, a development coach, and I have a constant flow of inspiration and motivation on my many social media platforms. When I think of today's theme, there are so many amazing components that are true to what it means to be a member of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. On your Take a moment and look across the room. Look at the diversity of the soror on your left and on your right and across from you. One of my favorite parts about our sorority is recognizing that we're encouraged to be our true selves and allowed to be diverse. I want you to find a soar who is different from you and give her a hug and a compliment. into strength and became a Sigma champion. On my 25th birthday, I was pregnant with twins, excited for my doctor's appointment that day, knowing that all I wanted was to see my son. Now picture me, five months pregnant with twins, but barely showing at all. Deep in my heart, I knew something was wrong. I found out on my birthday that one of my sons had been dead for six weeks, and the first miscarriage led to severe brain damage in my remaining son. The next few weeks were filled with every test you could possibly imagine, each time just hoping and praying for a good report. The final test was an MRI, and I remember crying out to God with the most honest prayer I've ever prayed. Not the politically correct prayer of, not my will but yours, but I had to say, God, I can't handle your will. I need my will this time. Has anyone ever had that kind of prayer? So, unfortunately, the amount of damage was just too severe. My son would have needed brain surgery immediately after being born, lung surgery within his first year of life, 24-hour care his whole life, and 
unable to process visual stimuli, and best case scenario, he lived to be 20 years old if he survived the pregnancy. So I was faced with the hardest decision I've ever had to make, and I delivered my sons at 23 weeks, getting to hold my son for the first and last time. I can still hear his last breath as I held him in my arms, and those are memories I'll cherish forever. This is just a part of my story, and I share this to share how so many of us are dealing with struggles that you wouldn't know just by looking at them. I started my job three days after delivering my son, and those around me had no idea until I decided to share that with them. And I do recognize that this is not everyone's story, but we've all been through that one thing that you swore you would never survive but you did. And today I'd like to focus on a few strategies that I think help turn our struggles into our strengths so that we can all be Sigma champions, right? In order to triumph over life's adversities that we face, it absolutely begins with your mindset first. So much of our mindset is influenced by our, our input and what we allow ourselves to see and hear. As you're scrolling through social media, what do you see? Are the images and posts uplifting and pushing you to be better? Or are the posts mundane, negative, and drama-filled? What conversations are you having with those around you? Does your circle motivate you to be better and hold you accountable? When you're spending time on YouTube or watching TV, are you watching things that motivate you to be a better person? You have to clean out your input. Unfollow them on social media, minimize your time with people who don't encourage you, and spend more time around people who help you become better. My beloved Soros, please hear me when I say this. Sometimes you have to distance yourself from family, friends, and negative soul wars. If someone in your life doesn't add positive encouragement, loving accountability, loving accountability, and an unwavering support, you have to distance yourself. And once you've adjusted your mindset, the next step is very simple. Do the work. You have to be committed to doing the work and overcoming this adversity, not simply by passing time, but working aggressively towards improvement. After losing my twin, I was faced with the greatest grief imaginable. But by the time of my expected due date, I was genuinely in a good place. How? I was willing to do whatever it took to heal and deal with my grief head on. I was in therapy every week. I had many cry sessions, the ugly cries. I went on vacation by myself. I detached from the world and began to put myself first. I created a self-care routine and I journaled all the time. Some days were up to 10 pages long. And I did whatever I felt necessary, and I did so unapologetically. My beloved Soul Wars, I want to share briefly the importance of both therapy and self-care. Hear me clearly when I say this, it is critical. Therapy is important because it's a safe place to be vulnerable and express the very issues that we face every day. Unpack some of that baggage that we begin to carry along for so long that it feels normal. I promise you'll start to feel a little lighter. And please, for the love of self, find time to care for yourself. I know those around you need you. I know Sigma needs you. But please take care of yourself first and use the energy that's left to care for others. 
because you cannot pour from an empty cup. I leave you with my final thoughts of this. The definition of champion is a person who has defeated or surpassed all rivals or competition. So when I think about our theme today, the diversity and strength of Sigma champions, your rivals and competition is life's adversity who came to knock you off your feet. With that being said, are you ready to be a Sigma champion? Yes. Are you ready to be a Sigma champion? Yes. All right. It has been my pleasure to share my story with you, and I'm excited to see all of our talented stores this evening. Before you leave this conference, I ask that you share your story with someone and listen to theirs as well. I do have my business cards available, um, and I look forward to connecting with you all. And if you would like to purchase a copy of my book, I have that as well, 23 and Finally Loving Me. The books are $15 each or two for 25. Thank you so much for your time, Soul Wars, and I hope you embrace your inner Sigma champion.